We're back here again in Visual Studio. We're going to walk through, in this case, the .NET SDK version of talking to the IAM service. This should be a lot simpler because a lot of things have been abstracted into typed objects so that you're not dealing with all the security code. You're not dealing with parsing results in XML. You've got strongly typed objects for everything. So in this solution file, in the before folder of the project, you'll see a .NET SDK WinUI project. Now I created this in a different fashion. If you go ahead just to see this, once you've installed the SDK, I can choose Add, and I can choose New Project, and you actually now have a subsection for AWS specifically, so I can add a console project to my solution. Once you do that, the other thing that happens is that you get prompted when it happens to put your credentials here in the config file. So once again, it puts my access key and my secret key here, and the, the objects automatically read from the config file, assuming you've used these names, and logs you in. So that's one thing you'll see when you use the SDK. If I open up the program folder, there's nothing really here yet. All I'm doing is saying I'm starting SDK calls versus the native calls. I'm going to go ahead and add the code here that makes the call to the IAM service. So the first thing I've typed in is an operation called create user. We'll make sure we go ahead and add this here so I don't to forget to call it at the main operation. And so what this is going to do is going to create a brand new user. So the very first thing, and you see I've got strongly typed objects. I've got Amazon Identity Management Service Client. Can't beat that. I go ahead and instantiate that, and it's going to pull the config from the config file my credentials. Next, I've got a create user request, which is available to me. And again, I instantiate that. Once I have that, then I want to set what is the username and what is the path. So same things you saw before. I can set only a couple parameters. There's not much there. So I can set the username, in this case, to be Sirotr SDK before we use Sirotr native from the native code. And I can set the path here. Note that I don't have to worry about URL encoding or anything like that. That's all taken care of for me behind the scenes. Then I can create an object called create user response, and that's the result of calling client create user passing in that request. So there's a lot of things on that client operation. I can add users to group, create access keys, create groups, create users, delete access keys, a whole rich set of things that I'm capable of doing with this strongly typed object and passing that in there. After we create the user, I'm going to go ahead and add a policy as well. But in this first exercise, all I want to do is actually create the user. When this succeeds, I can just say user created and be completed here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and press F5. I'm going to set this as the startup project. And when I get done running this, I should see a new user called Sirotr SDK with this path. This is run successfully. I see user created. So let's switch back to the console and see what I see in the management console. Back here in the management console, if I refresh, now I see Sirotr SDK as well as Sirotr native. Now if I jump in, you'll notice that for the path, now I've got a path here and I can actually see the IT architecture path. With the other ones that I created through the console, you just get the slash. I can't actually create anything with the path. So through the SDK, I do have control to set this path value, and sure enough, I was able to create this successfully. The next thing we want to do is add a policy. So I want to add a new function that's going to put a policy on this particular user. What's nice is you can use from AWS policy gen.s3.amazonaws.com policy gen, you can actually use this to generate the policy JSON you need to send into the service. So in this case, if I wanted to create a new policy for EC2 that allowed you to describe instances like I showed before, I can once again go down to EC2, pick which action I'm applying permission to here. So I want to call this on describe instances. So I'm going to allow them to describe instances. I'm not going to add any other additional conditions. That's the only thing I want to do here is I can add the statement and I can generate the policy. So now I've got this. I go ahead and use this in my code. Let's go ahead and see that in my code. So back here in Visual Studio, I've created the add policy operation. This time I have the exact same client, Identity Act, the Identity Management Service client. This time though, I've got a put user policy request. And you can see the documentation is pretty good here as well. After creating that policy request, I say, for which user is this policy applying? What do I want to call this policy? I'll call it the EC2 policy. And then what is the policy document? So here's where I can paste in that JSON generated on the other from the policy tool, encoding it properly so I can stick it here. So once again, I'm saying describe instances, allow that resource to do that. Finally, I've got a put user policy response, because when I call client put user policy and pass in that request, I'll get the response back. So here, the Sirotr SDK user should have a policy when I get done running this. So let's comment out create user since we've already created that user. And let's call add policy. When I run this application, I do see the policy was added. And if I go back to the management console, I should now see a policy attached to that Sirotr SDK user. Here in the, S in the console, I'll refresh. 
And if I look at Sorother SDK and switch over to permissions, I can go ahead and see now they do have EC2 policy and I can show it. And sure enough, it's the exact same one I passed in, describing instances and allowing them to call describe instance. So pretty neat that I'm able to create a policy pretty simply using the policy generator, attach that to a user account, and call the API. That ends these particular set of demonstrations where we looked at doing this in the console, looking at this doing the native API, and then finally doing it in the SDK.